And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, we are going to be making one of my favorite things. I love meatballs, and we are going to be making some Greek meatballs. They are delicious. They're fabulous. I can't wait to show you this. To go alongside the meatballs, we're going to make some orzo with Parmesan cheese, a little bit of parsley. Mm, great side dish for this. And then, of course, you got to have bread. And we're going to have an Italian loaf bread with an herb olive oil uh, mixture on the inside, and we're going to bake it in the oven. It's going to be fabulous. But the first thing we need to do is make the meatballs. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. And this is one of those dishes that once you make it, you are gonna fall in love with it. Now, normally I make this dish with one pound of ground sirloin and one pound of ground pork. This is where your adaptability comes in. My grocery store did not have any ground pork this morning, so I'm gonna be using all ground sirloin. So if you can find ground pork, a pound of it in there makes these meatballs delicious, but they're also great with just ground sirloin, which is what I'm gonna do today. If you wanted to make them, with turkey, ground turkey, you could do that too. You could use any kind of ground meat that you like. Some people like to use a meatloaf mixture, which is equal parts ground beef, ground veal, and ground pork. But I'm just using the all the, the ground sirloin today. I've got about two pounds total, but we got some things to do first before we do that. I have one cup, I'm just gonna pour it in this bowl, one cup of seasoned, Italian breadcrumbs, the dried breadcrumbs, perfectly fine to use those. I have a lemon. Now, Greek cooking has a lot of lemon in it, but I only want the zest. So I'm going to zest one lemon, the zest of just one good sized lemon, about a tablespoon or so, but I'm just going to use the whole lemon. Not the juice, but just the zest. The zest has got the essential oils in it and it adds so much flavor to your food and it's delicious. These meatballs, the first time I made these was actually at Christmas time last year. And Mike, my husband, went nuts over them. They are so good. So this is one of those recipes with, you know, maybe you've got a party coming up or a holiday or whatever, you know, that you wanted to um, do a special little thing for. You most certainly could do this as a main dish. But, and I'll show you what I mean a little ahead of time, a little, little further into the program. If you wanted to make these and put them in your crock pot and serve them at a party, these are great, great little appetizer type things. At, for Christmas at my mom's house, we all just do Christmas Eve, we just kind of do little appetizer things and that's what I made these for and it works perfect for something like that. Or you can serve it as I'm going to today alongside some pasta and have a, a main course out of it. But meatballs are delicious. You could serve these uh, in a hoagie roll and have a meatball sandwich, but these are different. These are Greek meatballs, and we're going to stuff them with cheese. And, oh, they're so good. I love them. Love them, love them, love them. Of course, I like meatballs. Not everybody does, but, but I do, and the, these particular ones really are very good. I've got I have some garlic here, as much or as little as you like. I like garlic, so I'm putting about three cloves of garlic in here. One of them kind of broke in half on me about three cloves. You can chop it or use a garlic press like I'm doing. I'm using the garlic press in this because I really don't want big, huge chunks of garlic. I really just want the smaller, and as you can see it come out, the garlic press really makes it a little finer. So I'm, I'm doing that. I'm gonna add a little bit of onion, just a couple of tablespoons. I've got one small onion here. I'm not gonna use the whole thing. And I'm actually gonna grate the onion. Um, because again, I'm not sauteing this, I'm not cooking it beforehand. So, and I don't want the great big chunks of onion in here. So I'm gonna grate my onion. You want the flavor, but you really don't want the great big chunks of it. 
So I'm just using a bigger microplane. You could use the same one, or you could chop it really fine if you don't have one of these. But I'm grating, and you can see it just kind of makes it kind of more liquidy, really. It adds the flavor, and then the juices, of course, go into the meatloaf mixture. Not meatloaf, but the meatball mixture. You could do this as a meatloaf by all means. If you, they could take this very mixture and make a meatloaf if you wanted to, but we are gonna make meatballs. I got a big hunk just fell down in there. And actually, I think that's probably enough. You just want a little bit of the flavor of the onion. Let's get that piece that fell. We don't want him in there. Mm. Strong garlic, strong onion. My eyes are watering. Gonna add a couple of eggs to bind it together. Love, love, love meatballs. I love spaghetti and meatballs. Italian food is probably, if I had to pick a favorite, poke your yolks there to get them broken up. I'm just gonna break them up just a little bit. If I had to pick a favorite type of food, this absolutely would be my favorite food. I've told you before about the little Greek, uh, little village that we go to in Florida sometimes whenever we get the opportunity to go. I love to go there called Tarpon Springs. The Greek food is fabulous. Greeks use a lot of olives and a lot of lemon. This is just half a cup of just plain. Uh, I'm using the green olives today that are stuffed with pimentos, but you could use Kalamata, you could use Greek, you could use black, you could use any kind of olive you like. I'm using the little green ones today because that's what I had. Cooking is all about using what you have. Now, there's always basic recipes, but, you know, there's substitutions that you can do. Maybe you don't have any of these green olives in your pantry today. You could use the, uh, the Kalamata olives if you wanted to. I love Kalamata olives. You could eat them straight out of the jar. Now, let me get this mix and show you one real quick. Add just a little bit of salt because it really, you, the olives are salty, and, you know, the breadcrumbs, of course, have a little bit of salt in them. So don't add too, too much. And some fresh ground pepper. This pepper mill does not want to cooperate with me lately. I don't know what is the problem. Take your finger. Well, before we do, let's get our cheese. I have one block of mozzarella cheese. Now, you can use, and I have used many times, um, String cheese, you know, that we all love. Just take a string cheese and cut it in pieces. You can use that. You could use feta. You could use the, the, the authentic Greek cheese if you wanted to. The, I think it's called halumeta. Uh, it's good. You want little pieces about like that, just little dice, because we're going to put these in the center of our meatballs. Let me cut this up real quick. Show you before I go to break how to do this. So good. Best hands, or clean hands of cook's best tools. You've heard me say that a thousand times. Just make sure your hands are good and clean. Don't want to compact it too, too much, but you want to get it all incorporated. All of the olives and all of the flavorings and the lemon, all that worked through your meat mixture. The egg. You want to have a baking sheet that's lined. Let me grab my baking sheet here, lined. I love the nonstick aluminum foil. Use it all the time. So get you so line a baking sheet. So we're going to bake these. You want it about the size, like that, about the size, about an inch, inch and a half. Go ahead and roll it in a small roll and then put a little indentation in there. Take one of your little cubes of cheese, put in the middle, and then finish forming your meatball around that and then put it on a lined baking sheet. Let me show you one more and then we'll go to break real quick. About the size of a golf ball or as big or as small as you like. I like mine about like that. 400 degrees. We're going to bake these first for about 20 minutes or so. So just form your little meatballs just like that put them on a line sheet I'm gonna take a quick break I'm just gonna keep rolling these meatballs and get them in a 400 degree oven and when I come back we'll start the orzo and the sauce I'll be right back with you in just a minute Psalm chapter
chapter 23, verse 4 says, For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Friends, that tells us that God is with us. That's his presence. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou art with me. No matter what you're going through today, know that God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That no matter the trial, no matter the problem, God is there. You know, friends come and go. Friends are there friends leave, but God is with you at all times, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation. He sticks closer than a brother. He is with us at all times. Let his word speak his presence into your life. All right, now our meatballs are in the oven, so let's get started on the rest of this meal. I've got a little kettle here that I have some chicken broth, like, I don't know, a couple of cups of chicken broth and about half a cup of water. I'm bringing that to a boil, and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to that. Um, that's gonna be for our orzo, so let's let that finish doing its thing. Let's get started on our sauce. In this pan, I'm going to, I've got about 28 ounces or so of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Now, I like the fire roasted. If you don't like the fire roasted, you can just use plain uh, tomatoes. That'll be fine. My pot here is steaming up. Um, but I do like the fire roasted. And you see all the little black little specks in there? That's just the charring that adds so much wonderful flavor. So I've got about 28 ounces or so of those, medium high heat. I've got a couple of tablespoons of tomato paste because I really want to kind of uh, bring up the, the tomato paste flavor. And a good little tip for you, if you buy your tomato paste in the little can, you know, that comes in the little can about like this, about that big, Get out what you need and put the rest in spoons full on wax paper and freeze it and then you can just take it out of your freezer whenever you need it. That's a great little way to use up your tomato paste and not throw it away. But it just adds richness to the sauce. We really just kind of want to bring this up to a simmer is what we're doing. I'm going to add a couple of tablespoons and I'm going to just kind of crush this a little bit at a time of dried oregano and I really do prefer dried oregano as opposed to fresh. Oregano is used tremendously in Greek cooking. And just, if you put it in your hands and just kind of do that or put it in a mortar and pestle, kind of releases the oils a little bit more. And about as much as you like. I like heat. So I'm adding about a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. And that's it for your sauce. We're just gonna kind of let that come up to a simmer. Then we're gonna drop our meatballs in there. Now this is where earlier I said, if you wanted to do this for a party, put your sauce mixture that we just made in a crock pot and then put your meatballs after you bake them, put your meatballs down in your crock pot, put it on low and for a party or a gathering of any kind, it's a perfect way to serve up your meatballs and, and do it in a crock pot. I do that at home all the time with this. Now, this is up to a simmer. So I wanna add about a cup and a half of orzo. Now you've seen me use orzo before. Orzo is pasta. It's just a different shape of pasta. Instead of it being like a long tube, it looks like rice, but it is not rice. It is pasta. And I've got my salted chicken broth and water. You could do it in, in straight water if you wanted to, but the, uh, the, the chicken broth adds just a wonderful flavor. That takes about six or seven minutes to cook. Leave your lid off. Once you drop your pasta in your water, leave your lid off or you're gonna have a mess all over your stove. Now, let's get our meatballs out of the oven and get them in our sauce and oh, and I'm gonna crank my oven up to 425 degrees because I'm gonna bake my bread in there. Look at these wonderful, wonderful little meatballs. Mm, so good. 
just could eat them right like this. Delicious, delicious, delicious. So that pan's hot, be careful. Let's get our tongs. We're gonna put our meatballs, and some of the cheese oozes out, but you know what, that's okay. And we're gonna nestle those down inside that sauce. And we're gonna let the flavor of the meat incorporate in with the tomato for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so if you're gonna do it like this. Oh, it's so good. They'll be ready to go about the time you get the rest of your meal done. Oops, dropped a piece of cheese there on my stove. You could take these meatballs if you wanted to and uh, serve them as a meatball sub, or you could put it over a plate of spaghetti. Would be a wonderful plate of spaghetti and meatballs, but we're just gonna serve ours as is. That is gonna actually be the main dish, is just the meatballs in the tomato sauce. That one's got that cheese that came out and oh, it caramelized and mm, I could just eat that. I love caramelized cheese. One of my favorite soups in the world is French onion soup. And I love to get the cheese that goes over the edge of the crock and kind of burns a little bit. Mm, so good, so good. Sauce is coming up to a simmer here. Get these meatballs. I gotta quit talking and work, don't I? Our pasta is boiling. You could serve a salad, a little green salad alongside this if you wanted to. I'm just gonna serve mine with some pasta. Let me get this out of my way. Now, let's take a spoon and just kind of nestle these down. You just really are wanting to warm the sauce through. Again, you could do this part in a crock pot and just let it on low for you know three or four hours. Uh, it really doesn't take long because the meatballs are cooked. If you wanted to do it on high, you could do it for say, I don't know, a couple of hours on high in your, in your crock pot, or do what I'm doing, just do it on the stove top. But I have made them, actually last Christmas I made them in my crock pot. And uh, I don't know if anybody else got to taste them or not because my husband ate them like crazy. Put your lid on, you just kinda wanna let that hang out. Stir your orzo, love orzo. You could really find it anywhere now. If, for whatever reason, you can't find the orzo, you could use any kind of small pasta shape that you wanted. It would be perfectly fine like that. Now, let's talk about our bread. I have got about a fourth of a cup of olive oil. Extra virgin here because the flavor really matters. I have some dried rosemary, about a tablespoon or so, and about a tablespoon of thyme. And this is my little mortar and pestle, but you can do it in your hand or just, you don't have to do this. It just releases the flavors, I think, a little bit. You just wanna kinda crush them with whatever. If you wanna put them in a baggie and use a, a rolling pin, you can do that. You just kinda wanna crush them up a little bit. Add that to your olive oil because that's the flavor. Oops, we got a little bit left there. And some crushed red pepper flakes. Again, as much or as little as you like. Let's whisk all that together. Now in my store this morning, they had this beautiful loaf of Italian garlic, roasted garlic bread. I'm using the roasted garlic bread today, but if you don't, can't find this, which you can really anywhere nowadays, the, the bakeries have come a long way. You could just use that uh, French loaf that you buy or the, you know, a baguette would be fine. Any kind of bread that you like is, is the point. Cut it in half. Look at these little pieces of that roasted garlic in there. That is going to be scrumptious to say the least. It's going to be so good. I could just eat the bread. Give me the meatballs and the bread and I'm happy. Now we want to pour this mixture over like half of the bread. And that bread just soaks that up. Oh, smells so good. And we're gonna put this over top. We're gonna wrap that up and put that in a 425 degree oven uh, for about 15 minutes just to kind of warm it through. I'm gonna take a quick break, just keep cooking our pasta and I'll be right back with you and then we're gonna eat. Be back in just a minute.
All right, now our bread is in the oven and here's our orzo and I just used a little slotted spoon and I'm leaving the, what's remaining of the cooking liquid in the pot because we may need that to loosen this up a little bit. Uh, now this is of course orzo with Parmesan cheese. I'm not adding too much salt because Parmesan cheese is very salty. A Little bit of freshly cracked pepper and of course Parmesan cheese. That's kind of the theme of the dish, isn't it? As much or as little as you like. It's my favorite cheese, so I add a lot. I add about half a cup at least. Let me grab a spoon. Let me get a, if I can find a spoon here. Well, this will work, this is fine. And just kind of stir that up and let that cheese sort of melt in there. Let's add a little cheese. Oh, I love Parmesan cheese. Grate it up. Couldn't be simpler, but you know what? Children will love this dish because it's just cheesy pasta, basically, is what it is. If you want to serve it to kids and they're a little bit uh, iffy on the green flecks, don't do the next part. Leave it out. But I like the little bit of green in mine. So I've got some flat leaf parsley, which is what I like. Um, I don't really care for the curly leaf as much for myself, but if you like the curly leaf, you could use that. But I like the flat leaf. I think it adds flavor. No, this is not just a garnish. It adds a certain flavor to your dishes. As a matter of fact, you could add, and I have added to my bread mixture, some chopped fresh parsley. If you wanted to add that with your herbs, would be delicious in that too. You kind of want to chop it fine. Put it on your board. You've seen, seen us do this. Hold your knife down with your other hand. I'm a lefty, so you may be backwards from me. But either way, just hold it and then gather it and chop in different directions till it's, you know, as fine as you want it to be. And add a little bit to your wonderful orzo. Oh, it just looks so yummy. Look at that cheese just melted away in there, yum. <laughs> I get excited over food. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. So let's put a little bit of that on our wonderful serving dish here. And I'm gonna actually try a little bit. Got me a little plate over here. So there's your wonderful little orzo dish to serve alongside your meatballs. Now, let's go to the meatballs. There's my spoon. Look at this, how good this looks. Now, this is your main course. You, of course, do not need to go any further. You could serve it over spaghetti if you wanted to, but I'm just serving it as my main dish. There's our wonderful meatballs with our sauce. Let's put a little bit of green over that. And I'm gonna try one here. Can't forget about our bread. Let's remember we got our bread in the oven. Let's keep that warm. All right, you ready? Where's my, there we go, this'll work. And our delicious, delicious bread here. Let me get this down. Get my board cleared off here. Pardon me. Now, let's get our bread cut. Yum. Hot. That's okay. Oh, look at there. Where's my bread knife? Did I cover it up? I did. And then just cut it into pieces. It's hot, be careful. You just really want to warm it. Of course, it's baked. You just really kind of want to warm it through. Oh, oh, look at that. Look, look at inside there. Let's open that up for you. Hot. That's hot. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Not wanting to cooperate with me today. So we'll just put it on there whole. And then look at the wonderful little herb mixture in there. Let's have a piece with our plate. And there you go. There's a meal that your family will love. Greek meatballs, the orzo with Parmesan cheese, and an herb stuffed bread. Let's try the orzo here. Mmm. 
cheesy. If you let that set a little bit, and sometimes it'll absorb too much flavor, that's the point of keeping the leftover chicken broth. If you need to add some to it, you can. It would be delicious. Now, look at that meatball. Look inside there. Can you see in there? With that melted cheese, oh, so good. Let's try the meatball here. It's hot, be careful. Mmm, mmm, so good. Mm-mm, 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 with some bread. Wonderful roasted garlic bread. Delicious. I'm happy. Try these recipes, download them. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Manor. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana. P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia 24212.